Remarks of the President at a Birthday Dinner Held in Honor of Governor DeSalle of Ohio From the Buckeye Building at the Ohio State Fairgrounds in Columbus, Ohio, January 6, 1962 Coleman. There is uh, no uh, city in the United States in which I get a warmer welcome and less votes than Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Mr. Coleman. Justice, Reverend Clergy, my colleagues in the House of Representatives, my two uh, distinguished former colleagues in the Senate of the United States, Senator Young and Senator Lausche, who have served this state and who also served the United States. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hundred years ago, Abraham Lincoln stayed up all one night in a telegraph office watching the results of a essential gubernatorial contest in this state in the darkest days of the Civil War. And at the end of the night, when the Unionist candidate who supported Lincoln's policies had finally emerged the victor, Lincoln wired, glory to God in the highest, Ohio has saved the nation. Two years ago, uh, yesterday, when Governor DeSalle was kind enough to endorse my candidacy, I had somewhat uh, similar sentiments about Ohio. <laughs> Last year, I felt that uh, maybe Ohio had lost the Union, but I believe now 1962, in the state of Ohio, that this state is going to elect a Democratic governor, is going to elect, in the person of Senator Lausche, a Democratic senator, and will elect Democratic congressmen who stand for progress in Ohio and the nation. I think that uh, this is a most important occasion. The President of the United States, as Harry Truman has pointed out on many occasions, wears many hats. And one of them is the hat of the leader of his party. A political party is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. Woodrow Wilson said after his great victory in 1912, what good is the success of a political party? unless that party is being used by the nation for a great purpose. And it is my conviction that here in this state and in the United States at large, the Democratic Party has been used by the people for a great state and national purpose. I come here on the birthday of Governor de Salle. He has rendered singular service before he became the governor of this state to the people of our country in high position. He has rendered service to the people of the state of Ohio as a distinguished governor and to every position which he has held. He has brought integrity, a sense of community with the people, and a recognition that no city, no state, and no country can afford to stand still but must move forward. So I'm delighted to come here tonight. The work that he has done in one field alone, in mental retardation, is indicative of his concern, which must be the concern of us all. Two months ago, I had two young girls come into my office who were sisters. One of both of them suffered from mental retardation. One had been discovered, the second one, because of the advance of science, and by changing her diet, that young lady will live a normal, helpful, and useful life. 
and her sister will be sick from now on. That's what a change of two years and the advance of science. People who say that all the things that had to be done were done in the administrations of Harry Truman or Franklin Roosevelt or Woodrow Wilson are wrong. We in our time, in this state and country, face problems entirely different but equally important. How glad all of us would be if in the next five years it's possible for the more than five million children who have suffered at one time or another in their lives from this affliction could be cured as we have cured so many other diseases. These are the things which interest our party, they interest the American people, their responsibilities upon us. Governor DeSalle has recognized them and what he has tried to do in the state of Ohio, we are trying to do in the United States of America. We have not done everything that we thought should be done in the campaign of 1960, but we have done many things. In the last 12 months, the economy of the United States moved ahead by 10%, over $40 billion. Agriculture in this country has had the highest income it's had since Korea. The United States at last is making a determined effort in the field of space where our neglect in other years cost us more in prestige than any failure since 1945. This country is committed to progress. This administration is committed to progress. And I can assure you that in the Congress of the United States this year, we are going to add programs which will serve our people. You may say, and some do, that everything should be left alone. I read where the Ohio Scholarship Fund reported last year that more than 41,000 of your 78,000 high school graduates were academically prepared for college, a record which few other states can duplicate. And yet, nearly 4,400 of these young boys and girls were unable to go to college because they could not afford it. It costs now $1,650 to put a student for a year in college. And yet half the families of the United States have incomes of less than $5,000 a year. In 1970, there will be twice as many boys and girls trying to get into the colleges and universities of this state and every other state as in 1960. Is this something that we should turn our back on? I believe that it is essential that we recognize in the state and in the national government our obligation to make it possible for any young man or woman of talent and motivation to secure an education and advance their life and interest. And we propose to help them do it. American families worry not only about educating their children, they also worry about how they're going to care for their parents. And that is why we are going to send again to the Congress of the United States. And I believe the Congress of the United States will enact this legislation which will permit older people to pay for their medical bills under a system of Social Security. Medical costs are high enough. Their parents, your parents, have longer illnesses. They spend two or three times as long in the hospital. They see physicians half again, as much as the people under 65. And the result is a medical bill twice as high, which falls in many cases on a mother and father who at the same time are attempting to educate their children. The parents cannot pay these bills. Three-fourths of our older people have incomes of less than $2,000 a year. Only one half of them have any kind of hospital insurance. And I believe that this represents an opportunity to permit them through the Social Security system, which was once opposed in the 1930s, but which is now a blessing to participate 
in providing for their own security when they're older. So all those who say that there's nothing left to be done, that we should rest on our oars, that the function of the national administration and government is to sit and lie at anchor are wholly wrong and we do not propose to follow their advice. We face a difficult and hazardous future, but one which I believe is bright with opportunity. All of the predictions which the communists made with such assurance years ago, very few of them have come to fruition. They prophesied that the Western world would break asunder, and yet the Western world sees the greatest impetus towards unity of the Atlantic community than it's had in its history. They prophesied that the communist world would be a great block, and yet in the last 18 months to two years, we have seen the beginning of the fragmentation of the communist empire, and East Germany and Poland and Hungary are kept in it by force, and Albania and Yugoslavia and China and the others begin to move away. So those who see only has it and know not recognize that in addition the other side of the coin is opportunity is wrong. I believe that the future can be bright for us. I believe that this administration has recognized that to the south, to the east, to the west, and above us, there are many things still left undone. From 1945 to 1960, the United States of America gave more assistance to Yugoslavia than it did to all of Latin America combined. This was the forgotten area. It was difficult for public officials of the United States government to travel with safety in many parts of our own hemisphere. I believe a change has come about, and I believe the people of this hemisphere recognize recognize an identity of interest, that freedom is the handmaiden of abundance, and that through working together in the days to come, this hemisphere can set an example to a watching world. So I come to Ohio uh, a year later, and I come uh, to express my regard for your distinguished governor, and the members of the Congress who have assisted on many occasions in advancing the interests of this state and country. And I want to commit myself to you, as I did then, to the progress of this country. On the back of your program, there is a picture of the seal of the state of Ohio. You will see that there is a sun low on the horizon. It is my judgment that that is not a setting sun, but a rising sun. Because, as the state of Ohio says in its great seal, with God, all things are possible. Thank you.